Yo, what is going on, everyone? My name is Nick or the Notorious Fantasy, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about my week number 15 injury roundup for fantasy football in 2021. Inside today's video, we're going to be recapping all of the notable injury news of the week, as well as discussing potential pivots based upon the injury news. But before we could get into things, I would like to ask if you are new to the channel and you do end up enjoying today's video, to please make sure that you do hit that subscribe button down below. And while you're down there, whether you are new to the channel, or not, please make sure that you do hit that like button down below. It would help us out a ton. And if you would like to follow me on Twitter, please do so at NotoriousFNTSY. So without further ado, let's get into my week number 15 injury roundup. We begin with the first bit of injury news. That is that Elijah Mitchell is dealing with swelling in his knee and he will not be good to play this week in week 15 up against the Atlanta Falcons. This will be the second consecutive miss for Elijah Mitchell, though he is not on the IR. So the assumption would be that he would be good to go and play play next week for the San Francisco 49ers. This will allow for Jeff Wilson to become the lead back on the team, but the biggest issue with Jeff Wilson being the lead back is that when Elijah Mitchell is in, he is the clear workhorse running back. There is not really anything that the other running backs are going to be able to do to take carries away from him, whereas when Elijah Mitchell is out and Jeff Wilson is now the number one option, they don't really trust Jeff Wilson in the same way that they trust Elijah Mitchell because in this case, with Jeff Wilson as the starter, we're going to be seeing Debo Samuel get a couple of rushes. The other running backs on the team will be touching the ball, maybe even the fullback, and that is going to limit the amount of upside that Jeff Wilson has. Now, does that mean that I'm sitting Jeff Wilson in every scenario? No, but his upside is certainly limited. He's not a guy that I would consider as a top 12 running back on the week, whereas if Elijah Mitchell played up against the Atlanta Falcons defense, he could be ranked as a top five running back, but again, he is out. Jeff Wilson is in. The next injury news to discuss is that Jalen Hurts practiced in full on Friday. Friday. According to the head coach Nick Sirianni, Hertz continues to trend in the correct direction, and he expects Hertz to be listed as questionable on the team's final injury report. This game is also now pushed to Tuesday up against the Washington football team, making it even more likely, at least in my opinion, that Jalen Hurts is able to play with those extra days of rest. But since the game is on Tuesday, then if Hertz does not end up playing and comes out earlier on Tuesday, then you're basically fucked. So what you need to do is pick up Gardner Minshew if you plan on playing Jalen Hurts. If you look for a different option, obviously, and you're playing someone different, then it's fine. You don't have to pick up Gardner Minshew, but you don't want to be stuck on Tuesday with no starting quarterback. So make sure that you pick up Gardner Minshew just in case everything goes wrong and Jalen Hurts is not able to play even though all these signs, especially from Nick Sirianni, point to the fact that Jalen Hurts will be good to go on Tuesday. The next injury news comes from the same game, and that is that Jordan Howard will be able to play up against the Washington football team on Tuesday. With Miles Sanders and Jordan Howard both good to go in this game, in my opinion, Jordan Howard basically fades out of fantasy relevance. But at the same time, it needs to be noted that Nick Sirianni just loves giving the football to Jordan Howard. And with that said, I think that severely limits the upside of Miles Sanders, who had a fantastic game in his last game up against the Jets before their bye that they had last week. So again, this does not completely eliminate me from wanting to play Miles Sanders, but I'm very nervous about when they're knocking on the door, potentially to score up against the Washington football team, that they take Sanders out and throw Jordan Howard in, and he vultures the touchdown. So I'm a little bit more concerned about Miles Sanders than I would be if Jordan Howard was not playing in this game. The next injury news is another running back, and that is DeAndre Swift was ruled out up against the Arizona Cardinals with a shoulder injury and some of what I've been reading kind of points to maybe DeAndre Swift is going to be done for the season and that seems very worrisome now I haven't seen any credible sources say that but that is something that I will point out when I was doing research for this video that I saw some things talking about that if Jamal Williams is cleared to play in this game up against the Arizona Cardinals now is it an ideal matchup up against that Cardinals defense no but Jamal Williams will be the lead back on the team and I would start him with confidence again not a top 12 running back, but a guy that I think could easily be a running back too. If Jamal Williams is not good to go, then you're stuck with Craig Reynolds because he appeared to be the clear lead back in the absence of DeAndre Swift and Jamal Williams up against the Denver Broncos last week, having 11 carries for 83 yards, as well as having two receptions on two targets for 16 yards. Though if he is the starter in that game, you may be flying directly into a trap, so I wouldn't be very excited to fire up Craig Reynolds this week. The next injury news to discuss is Lamar Jackson. 
Jackson is questionable with an ankle injury up against the Green Bay Packers. This, to me, seems like the classic case of where you got to wait until Sunday to see what happens. You got to wait till pregame because I don't think anything's going to come out today that is going to tell you whether Lamar Jackson is playing or not because of the quote unquote competitive advantage that the team would get going up against the Packers because now the Packers have to prepare for both Huntley and Lamar. And then technically, they wouldn't have to prepare for Lamar Jackson if they were to just rule him out today on Saturday. Head coach John Harbaugh says that Jackson has a chance to play despite the fact that he missed practice all week. If Tyler Huntley was to be the starter, I wouldn't necessarily fade Tyler Huntley and not want to start him. But in 99% of scenarios, you're sitting in the fantasy playoffs right now. You probably have a better option than Tyler Huntley. When looking at the whole offense as a whole, guys like Hollywood, Brown, Mark Andrews, all these other guys, I wouldn't completely fade the offense with Huntley under center because Huntley isn't some dog shit backup. But I definitely wouldn't feel as confident as I would if Lamar Jackson was good to go in this game. But before we break down the next injury news. I would like to let you guys know that we have partnered with Yahoo Fantasy this NFL season to bring you guys some great offers. Check out our exclusive limited time offer, which gets you guys one free month of All Small Plus Platinum. Just click the link down below to redeem. If you would like immediate access, that's okay as well. All you got to do is email support at osmo.com and we will get you set up. You can also receive up to a $100 first match bonus with Yahoo as part of their 12 days of winning when you use promo code XMAS100. That is promo code XMAS100. 100 one word for up to a $100 first match deposit bonus. Yahoo will be featuring daily contests with guaranteed payouts for everyone, including tonight's $2,000 Osmo free roll, which you can enter down below. Make sure you use our DFS tools and projections designed specifically for Yahoo to give you guys the best shot at winning big. Please make sure you guys check out Yahoo Fantasy. Link down below in the description. Back on into the video. The next injury news to discuss is Emmanuel Sanders is listed as doubtful up against the Carolina Panthers. In his absence, we should be seeing more of of Gabriel Davis, who has scored a touchdown in both of his last two games. This would also give a slight boost up for Cole Beasley, who was targeted heavily last week. Up against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, he had nine receptions on 11 targets for 64 yards. Has Cole Beasley been amazing this season? No, but if we see him in this target hog role where he is just being peppered with targets because Emmanuel Sanders is gone, then I'm definitely fine playing Cole Beasley this week, especially up against the Panthers. And Gabe Davis is also an interesting start because he just finds his way into the end zone every single week at this point. In that same game, Josh Allen was removed from the Bills' final injury report and will be starting up against the Panthers. He participated fully on Friday, even with the foot injury. He should be considered a top-end option in fantasy football this week. Though, it should be noted since it's a foot injury that this could affect the amount of rushing that he ends up doing in the game, as well as if he's able to rush the ball as efficiently. But at the end of the day, even if he's not able to rush as well, I think he could still have a very solid performance up against the Panthers' defense. Next injury news to report on is Damian Harris has been ruled out up against the Indianapolis Colts tonight. Harris practiced in a limited fashion all week, but ultimately was designated to be out yesterday on December the 17th. This will put Ramondre Stevenson in the starting role. Ramondre Stevenson has performed pretty well all season long, and I think he does have top 24 value on the week. Not a guy that I'm going to tout as a top 12 running back up against the Indianapolis Colts, but he certainly does have a decent amount of upside. Next, we pivot into James Conner and Chase Edmonds, both being expected to play up against the Detroit Lions this week. We should be seeing a committee system in Edmonds' return, with Conner being the lead back, as in my opinion, he has proved that in Edmonds' absence, that he is the superior back of the two. Now, it's not like Chase Edmonds is going to be irrelevant in this offense, but he's not a guy that I'm very excited to start this week, whereas James Conner, I would still consider as a top 15 running back going forward, especially in this amazing matchup up against a bad Detroit Lions defense. And final injury note of today's video is Leonard Fournette practiced fully on Friday and will be good to go up against the Saints, according to head coach Bruce Arians. So a lot of people were really panicking about Leonard Fournette on Friday, worried about, oh, should I pick up Ronald Jones? Turns out you don't have to. Leonard Fournette is good to go. And with how well Leonard Fournette has been playing as of recently, he is a must-start running back. So go ahead and put Leonard Fournette in your lineup. So thank you guys all so much for watching today's video. If you did end up enjoying, please make sure to hit that like button as well as that subscribe button. And make sure you check out Yahoo Fantasy. Link down below in the description. And if you would like, you can follow me on Twitter as well, at NotoriousFNTSY. I love you guys all so much. I hope you have a great rest of your guys' day. And as always, good boy.